Who wants to see a big block Chevy head shootout? We got the low buck boys versus the big buck brand names. So how do they compare? In this video, we've got a big block Chevy head shootout on a 572 inch solid roller cam big block Chevy stroker. In this corner from Pro Max, we've got their Shocker Series 340cc big block Chevy heads. In this corner, Airflow Research 345cc big block Chevy heads. Two questions. How much power do they make and how much do they actually cost? To run a comparison test, even an accidental one between two cylinder heads that flow 400 CFM, meaning they can support easily 800 horsepower, we had to have a really good test motor. So I put together a stroker big block that <laughs> measured 572 inches. Should be more than enough displacement to take advantage of what the two cylinder heads had to offer. So to make this motor, we put together a Dart Big M block, aftermarket, you know, Dart Big block, and we um, combined a 4.55 bore with a 4.375 stroke. So it had both more bore and more stroke than a standard big block, obviously. And we stuffed in there a Forge rotating assembly. The rotating assembly consisted of a Lenati Signature Series 4340 Forge steel crank. And then we combined that with a set of uh, rods and pistons from CP Carrillo. It was their Bullet Series, their you know Bullet Series stuff, really good. Worked out well, and the forged pistons combined with the chamber in the two cylinder heads that we tested, which were both between 121 and 122 cc, so they were both pretty even there. They produced a static compression of 11 to 1, and the reason I chose that static compression ratio was because we would also run nitrous and boost and stuff on this motor. It's just a test motor that we want to run a bunch of stuff on, including this <laughs> our accidental cylinder head comparison. So to get this thing, obviously, to make power, since we had a lot of displacement, we had a big camshaft in it, or you know, reasonably big camshaft in it. It was an off-the-shelf cam, not a custom deal. It was an 11721-9 solid roller from Comp Cams. It, it had 775-748 lift split, a 284-292 degree duration split at 50, and 112 degree lobe separation angle. That was combined with the uh, Endurix solid roller lifters, and obviously some hardened 3H push rods and stuff. We had to get the right length going with each one of the cylinder heads. And then we top that all off with an Edelbrock Super Victor intake designed to accept a 4500 Dominator series carburetor and then a 1050 Holley, you know, Ultra XP Dominator. I really like those, they're nice lightweight and they, <laughs> they work really well. Plus they, a Dominator looks really cool on a big block. So you're gonna have a big block, you know, you gotta have a Dominator on it. We also had, you know, other, other cool parts on there. A uh, set of Pro Magnum 1.7 comp roller rockers, an ATI super dampener, and a you know billet distributor, all, all kinds of good stuff. So this was a good system. And one of the critical elements on a big block for any big block, whether we're doing a head test or whatever we're doing, but especially on a stroker, because these tend to have, big blocks tend to have windage problems, with, especially when you add stroke to them. So we wanted to make sure we had a good oiling system. And Moroso supplied this deal. It was a really good um aluminum pan with an integrated windage tray and a billet oil pump so our oiling system was really good and we had to even on the dyno we always end up playing with the oil level on this to get the thing to minimize windage and still make sure that we have enough oil supply so that we don't run out of oil during the test so we you know by adjusting the oil if, if we have too much oil the power goes down on the big block so we want to make sure that we have the right oiling and we we ran um after the break-in we ran lucas um 5w30 synthetic oil in after the test or after the break-in so the first test was to run the airflow research uh 345 as cast heads and so it's an interesting comparison between the as cast and the full cnc heads that we put on from uh, pro max but the airflow research heads were an as cast port a 345 cc intake port and a 124 124 cc exhaust port they had uh, they're available with either 117 cc or 121 cc chambers now the 121 cc chambers are the full cnc chamber it's an as cast port and bowl but with a full cnc chamber and it works really well so we we opted for ours we bought i bought these heads and they were 121 cc chambers we i bought them bare and then finished them up with a spring package from uh comp cams 
The comp cam spring package was an 847 triple spring and a 739 uh, titanium retainer. So that worked out really good. We had enough spring rate for our solid roller cam. And obviously we had enough, you know, coil bind clearance and all that stuff because we had, you know, a fair, fair amount of lift, not 800 lift or even one inch lift like some of the race guys are using, but it was a good um, spring package. The AFRs also had a five angle valve job. They promised 400 CFM at 700 lift. And, uh, you know, the thing I like about the AFR heads historically on all of their stuff that we've tested, they always have really good uh, mid lift flow numbers, which kind of helps them make power. So this was our combination on the big block equipped with the Airflow Research 345 ASCAST heads, our 872, or our, <laughs> oh, it's, it's been a long day. <laughs> our 572 stroker produced 842 horsepower, although power was still climbing and not, not dramatically had we continued to rev this thing out closer to 7,000 RPM, but I ran it to 6,600, but it was still climbing a little bit. So there's probably another few horsepower in this thing. So 842 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 743 foot pounds of torque. You can see it had a good curve and you know, 800 plus horsepower is a good combination. This thing ended up making quite a bit more after we put a tunnel ram on it, but equipped with a single four barrel. That's a good power output. And now let's take a look and see what happened when we installed the CNC ported heads from Promax. As I indicated in the introduction, this comparison actually happened by accident. Normally when I would do a back-to-back -back cylinder head test between any two heads, I would do it on the same day. So we would run one set of heads and then optimize the power output with timing and jetting. And then we would take those heads off and put the other set on sort of set of heads on and do the same thing and do it back to back on the same day you know same engine same dyne all that stuff and this this test happened in a different way because the guys from promax had sent a set of their heads out and we were going to run them on this combination but for a different series of testing and this test actually we installed these heads a few days after we installed the airflow research heads i don't think that there would be a big difference in the power there might be none but i just wanted to point that out that normally when i do a dedicated test that i do it a certain way and this one did not happen like that. But it's an interesting comparison between the 340cc Promax heads and the 345cc Airflow Research heads since we tested them on the same motor. The other thing that's interesting is that they also had the same combustion chamber uh, volume at 121 to 122 cc's. And they had the same valve sizes and the same almost uh, identical port volume. So it's an interesting test to compare the two. Now the Promax heads... Promax also offers two other big block heads. They offer a smaller ASCAST head and actually a bigger CNC head, like a 370cc head for guys going after trying to maximize the, the flow rate and maybe for real, really high lift cams even bigger than we ran on this 572. But we selected this 340cc because we also wanted to run this on other combinations. Like I ran this on a 496 and on the 496 it made 675 horsepower. So a lot of guys pointed to that when I ran the 496. Oh, that head doesn't work, but it doesn't make very much power. But it wasn't the head that was holding the motor back. It was actually the other way around. It had a fairly mild camshaft in it. It was only 496 inches. It had a 10 to 1 compression. So it was not the combination that that head could excel on. This one, obviously, is a lot better. Now, we need to take a look at the Promax head. As I said, 340cc intake port, full CNC, meaning the port and the bowl and the combustion chamber, whole CNC chambers. As I said, two, 2.3 and a 1.88 valve package, stainless steel valves, so good stuff there. The casting itself was an offshore casting that, that Promax finishes here. They do the machine work and the CNC work here in the United States. It is a 356 T6 casting, so it has good aluminum. It has a thick deck, a, a three quarter or 0.75 um, deck thickness, which is good. So if you want to use this with boost or something, it has a thick deck. They diamond home the guides. Um, it's set up for 716 studs and guide plates, and it's it's their Shocker Series um, 340, and it has a 340cc intake port and a 135cc exhaust port. Now, it's interesting if you take a look at the flow numbers supplied both by Promax and Airflow Research for their heads, the Promax heads not only have more peak flow, but they have a lot more mid-lift and low-lift flow, 
and it's never been my experience in all the heads that I've tested. The airflow research stuff, the reason that they make such good power, a lot of times they don't have the best peak flow of the heads. That When I do a big head shoe dot, like if you take a look at the big big block Chevy oval port or rec port cylinder head test, the, the airflow research stuff always did fairly well. And the reason that they usually do well is because they have a lot of average airflow. They have really good low and especially mid lift flow numbers, which tends to translate into power production. Um, I've not seen cylinder heads have the mid lift and low lift numbers that the guys from Promax are advertising that this head has. I didn't flow test them and that would have been the best way to do it to flow test both heads so I could do them back to back on the same airflow bench and actually find out what they do. But as we'll see when we compare the two heads, um, there's a big difference in the power curves, not the peak so much, but in the average power production of the two heads. So equipped with this Promax 340 24 degree Shocker Series head, our 572 big block Chevy produced 850 horsepower and 719 foot-pounds of torque. So it, it made good power, made good torque. And so right away you might think, oh yeah, the low buck head is <laughs> making every bit as much power as the brand name head. But if we do a comparison between the two, if we overlay the airflow research head in red, we see that we see two things I want to point out. First of all, I didn't rev the airflow research combination out as high as I did the Promax head, and the power was still climbing with the airflow head, even though it leveled out here. It was actually climbing back up, not by a lot, but by a few horsepower. So I think we might have it, it might have gotten up close near the peak number, but that's not really the important part. The important part is take a look at all of this power from 4,500 to all the way past 6,000. I mean, we have a difference of, we have a difference of like 20 to 22 horsepower um, between the two. So you would definitely, you know, one would definitely accelerate faster than the other because of the average power production. And the reason that I brought up the mid and low lift flow numbers is these two heads have the same valve size. They have almost the same port volume. This kind of thing usually is a function of average airflow. Um, because, like I said, since they have the same valve size and the same port volume, you know they have they have a very similar coefficient of discharge. <laughs> but the flow numbers um, usually dictate this, and the only way for me to know that would would have been for me to flow test them myself. But that's why a back-to-back -back test shows stuff that we can't see on a flow bench because obviously nobody races flow benches, <laughs> and that's why the dyno actually kind of tells you what's going on. So here are the difference between the two heads: the 345 airflow research head and the 340 Pro Max head. The 340 Pro Max head did well, uh, made made good peak power, and if you want, you can argue that it made more peak power than the ASCAST Airflow Research 345 head, although I don't think I give it a fair shot by not revving it out far enough, but much more average power from the brand name head. So let's get to our conclusion now and talk about the difference in pricing between the two. Okay guys, what'd you think about the comparison between our Pro Max heads and our Airflow Research heads? Here are a couple things that I want you to consider other than just the power output, although we do need to consider the power output. Even if we give the peak power advantage to the Pro Max heads, it made 850 and the Airflow Research heads made 842 and 843, despite the fact that I don't think I rev the Airflow Research head combination out far enough. Even if we give that peak horsepower win to the Pro Max guys, good job. What about average power production? I mean, average power production is actually the thing that wins races. So in that test, in that comparison, the Airflow Research Head obviously had a lot more average power production. So it takes the win there. Maybe the Promax gets the win in the peak power production. But which one of those is actually more important to you guys? That's something to consider. The other thing to consider is the whole made in the USA thing. For a lot of guys, that's very important. Now, the Promax Head... They do their machining and do their CNC porting here in the United States, but the head itself comes from offshore. The Airflow Research guys, that's a made in the USA kind of thing. So if that's important to you, that's another consideration. The other thing you're gonna compare both of these things to actually is price. So if you look at the pricing for a Promax head versus the pricing for an Airflow Research head, you know, available through Summit or JEGS or however you're going to get it, here's what I want you to do. And I want you to make comments in the video. 
take a look at and option each one of these heads out the way that you guys need it for your combination. Do you need a solid roller spring? Do you need a titanium retainer? Do you need a hydraulic roller spring? Option the head out the way that you guys need it for your combination. Then let me know in the comments what's the difference in actual difference in pricing between these two heads the way that you would get them for your combination let me know in the comments what that difference is and then whether or not any difference that might be there does that justify the other two things which head would you guys pick for your combination i'm richard holder guys thanks for watching make sure to like share subscribe ring the bell do all that stuff more testing coming up